read a very familiar <coughs> passage of Scripture. Hear the Word of God. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, that people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. <coughs> may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we ask now for understanding of your scriptures from the Old Testament, the story about the stakes invading the Israelites' camp. And this New Testament passage we've heard so many times of your great love. Jesus said he must be lifted up, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness. Give us understanding, Lord. Open up our hearts and minds uh, to, to your grace through our Lord being lifted up on the cross and giving his life for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Does anybody uh, know what the word Ophidiophobia means? Ophidiophobia. Fear of snakes. Of snakes. Actually, it is the abnormal fear of snakes. Now, I don't know what the difference is between the normal fear of snakes and the abnormal fear of snakes. I, I, I'm guessing that you, if you walk out in, in the yard and, and you see a snake crawling along and you jump and, and then you say, be careful, there's a snake. That's the normal fear of snakes. The abnormal fear of snakes would be what my wife does when she sees a mouse out in the kitchen. <laughs> She screams and comes running faster than she, than she usually runs, yelling at me, saying, there's a mouse out in the kitchen! I think that's the abnormal fear of snakes. You see that snake and, and you take off running and screaming. I believe human beings have an innate fear of snakes ever since the Garden of Eden when the snake came into the garden. I think it's in our DNA. I mean, you can tell when if you're walking along as a coil of hose to the side and you see out of the corner of the eye and you jump thinking it's a snake. I think some caveman long ago came out of the cave and, and uh, saw a snake crawling along, a poisonous snake, picked it up, got bitten and died. Another caveman come out of the cave, saw a snake and took off running and he lived. And, and, and so by natural selection, those ones that live, we, we get that same fear. So, so we, we have this Fear of snakes. I don't know if you've seen the news stories about the snakes taking over Florida. The Burmese pythons. I thought this cartoon was interesting. The snake is saying, first the Everglades, then Washington, and then the world. <laughs> what has happened is pet owners have released these Burmese pythons into the Everglades because they got tired of taking care of them. They, 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 grow big, they grow to be 20 feet long. And, and there's no natural enemies down there in the Everglades. They're, they're calling these Burmese pythons the snakes that ate Florida. They've decimated the raccoon population, the possum uh, population, and the rabbit population. They, they're just killing off all of these animals. And so they're paying people to go in and, and, and kill these Burmese Pythons. Well, in the Old Testament, the Israelites had a snake problem. Caleb read that story to us from Numbers. What was happening 
uh, the Israelites, as always, were complaining about their conditions in the wilderness. They, they always were facing water shortages. God had, had given them manna, but they were getting tired of, of eating manna. They didn't like the harsh conditions that uh, they faced daily, and so they began to complain again to Moses and, and to Aaron. They complained and they complained, and then the snakes came into camp. And when the snakes came into camp, they, they were a, a aggressive snakes that, that fit the Israelites, and, and many of the Israelites began to die from these snake bites. After they died, they came to God and they repented and they said to Moses, please ask God to take these snakes away from us. And, and this is the scripture. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake, put it on a pole. Anyone who's bitten can look at it and live. And, and so made, Moses made a bronze snake and he put it on a pole. Then when anyone who was bitten by the snake looked at the bronze snake, they lived. Now, it's, it's so interesting to me that as Moses took that bronze snake and he put it upon this pole and, and raised it up in the air, that he took the image of the very thing that was causing the problem. He took that, that image of the snake and he put it up on that pole. And when the Israelites looked up at, at that snake and, and saw it, then by faith they believed that God was going to heal them of, of the snake bite. So the very thing that had the power of death over the Israelites was placed upon that pole. And when it was placed upon that pole and raised up, the power of death was removed from, from that image. So it's, it, it's interesting when I think about that. In the 1950s, they came up with snake anti-venom. This is how they came up with snake anti-venom. They would take a poisonous snake, like a rattlesnake, and they would milk the poison out of that snake into a glass. And they would take a, a small uh, amount of that poison and inject it into an animal, like a lamb. Well, that lamb's blood would form antibodies that would attack the poison. So they would take the blood of the lamb, and they would cleanse it, and they would purify it, and then they would inject that blood into a snake bite victim who was bitten by a rattlesnake. And the antibodies in the blood from the lamb would attack the poison in the snake bite victim, and the snake bite victim <laughs> would be healed. Think about that. Just as Moses held up that image, and the very thing that caused death that image also inspired the faith that nullified the power of death. And when you consider the manufacture of anti-venom being made from the venom of the snake state, how coincidental is that? It's, it's just fascinating. Now our New Testament story takes it even a step farther. John chapter 3, Jesus refers directly to this story of the snake invasion from Numbers 21. Verses 14 and 15. Jesus says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. Now, as Christians, we believe that when Jesus was lifted up on the cross, He became a sacrifice. A sacrifice for us. He became what we call the Lamb of God, pure and innocent. He volunteered to go to the cross to 
take our punishment. He was willing to go to the cross to take our, our sin upon himself. To me, that, that's not that dissimilar from a young man or young woman voluntary for the, voluntary for the military to defend our freedoms. They sign up, they go into the military, they know that by volunteering, they may be placed in harm's way. They may be called upon to give of their very life for your freedom and for my freedom. So in a similar way, Jesus went to the cross voluntarily to suffer and bleed and die there for, for our sins. Now those sins have the power of death over us, just like a snake bite can kill us and poison us. Those sins have the power of death over us. But on the cross, Jesus produced the remedy. The poison of sin that had the power of death over us was not only neutralized, but reversed. How was that done? Through the blood of the Lamb. Just, to, just as a, a lamb is used to produce antibodies to counteract a snake's poison through the blood. So the blood of the lamb shed on the cross by, by faith is extended to us and we receive the remedy, the, the anti-venom from that poison of sin that has the power of, of death over us. The blood has the power to destroy the power of sin and give us life. And I think that's why Jesus spoke these very next words, probably the most familiar words in Scripture. John 3, 16, For God loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You see, we've all been snake bit. We've all fought wrong things and we've said wrong things and, and, and we've done wrong things that, that have put the poison of sin with, within us and the power of death over us. But God loved us so much that He provided the remedy. As Moses lifted up that bronze snake in the wilderness and the, and the Israelites looked up at that bronze snake and they believed God would heal them from the poison that was in them, so Jesus was lifted up. He became the Lamb of God, the sacrifice for us. And, and as we look up and we trust God's mercy and, and grace, that, that blood that He shed has the same effect. The power to destroy death, spiritual death, in our lives. God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. And whoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When we look up and when we trust, we receive the remedy, the anti venom because there is power in the blood. Amen. Let's turn to our final hymn, There's Power in the Blood, number 191. 